Hello everyone. This is Pratima and welcome back to Experimental Physiology series. Today we will study effect of various ions on isolated frog's heart. Yes, you heard it right. An isolated heart. We remove the heart from the body and perfuse it with a suitable solution to maintain its activity for a sufficiently long duration. Before we proceed, pause for a moment and think how can the heart continue to beat even when removed from the body which property of cardiac muscle allows this yes the answer lies in the property of autorhythmicity the heart's ability to generate its own rhythm independent of external stimulation pacemaker cells in the heart spontaneously generate action potentials leading to rhythmic contractions if you would like to understand in detail how pacemaker cells work watch part 1 of my video on properties of cardiac muscle the link is in the description we will cover this topic under the following headings the apparatus required for this experiment then the procedure it is followed by the discussion regarding the physiological basis of this effects and the clinical applications of this knowledge what apparatus we need first the marriott's bottle it's a glass bottle with an airtight cork and a glass tubing passing through the cork it maintains constant pressure in the perfusing fluid another instrument is sims cannula it is used to deliver the perfusing solution to the heart it is a three way cannula a short end of the cannula is inserted into the heart so heart is attached to this end horizontal limb of the cannula connects to the marriott's bottle via rubber tubing and a vertical limb maintains the perfusing fluid pressure x block is used to fix the cannula on the stand then as usual we'll need starling's heart lever to record the cardiac activity the fluid which is used or the perfusing fluid which is used to maintain the cardiac activity is called as ringer solution or ringer lock solution for amphibian heart the composition of 100 ml ringer solution is sodium chloride 0.65 g calcium chloride 0.012 g potassium chloride 0.014 g sodium bicarbonate 0.01 g disodium hydrogen phosphate 0.001 g and glucose 0.1 g glucose is added in the solution just before starting the experiment since we are studying effect of various ions we need 1% potassium chloride and 1% calcium chloride solutions as well note that this experiment was recorded 18 years ago just for academic purposes okay now coming to the procedure part on the stand starling's heart lever is fixed upside down that is the spring facing downwards above the lever x block is fixed onto the stand to hold the sims cannula marriott's bottle is placed on another stand and it is filled with ringer solution the rubber tubing carrying the ringer solution is clamped to prevent loss of solution once this setup is ready the frog is dissected as usual and pericardium is removed completely till the sinus venosus three veins forming sinus venosus are identified and ligature is passed behind these veins using an aneurysm needle a small incision is made in the central vein and the sims cannula which is filled with ringer solution is introduced into it and directed towards the sinus venosus the ligature is tightened around the neck of the cannula to secure the heart in place now the heart is gently lifted up and carefully separated from the surrounding structures the cannula along with the heart attached to it is fixed to the x block the horizontal arm of the cannula is now connected to the marriott's bottle via the rubber tubing and the clamp is released to start the perfusion As the heart starts beating it is connected to the starling's lever by inserting the pin into the apex of the heart the normal cardiogram is recorded on a slow moving chymograph note that in this experiment 
upstroke represents systole and downstroke represents diastole after recording the cardiogram for sufficient duration one or two drops of 1% potassium chloride are added to the perfusing fluid as you can note the heart rate and the force of contraction has decreased so as you can note heart has slowed down on further increasing the concentration of potassium chloride in the perfusing fluid heart stops in diastole which is represented by this straight line after the downstroke now as the heart is perfused with the ringer solution the effect of excess kcl is washed off and once heart regains its normal uniform activity one drop of calcium chloride is added into the perfusing fluid it immediately resulted into increase in force of contraction which is very obvious and evident from this graph now we add few more drops of calcium chloride and because of excess of calcium chloride now heart stops in systole as the perfusion with a normal ringer resumes slowly the heart recovers from the effects of calcium chloride thus all these effects what we have studied are temporary this was about the procedure part now let's discuss the physiological basis of these effects with reference to ideal recording addition of extra potassium chloride in perfusion fluid increases extracellular fluid concentration of potassium ions that is it causes hyperkalemia moderate hyperkalemia reduces potassium gradient across the cell membrane if you remember normally potassium concentration is greater in the intracellular fluid and less in the extracellular fluid so this gradient is reduced this decreases potassium efflux and leads to movement of resting membrane potential towards the positive side this change in the membrane potential causes inactivation of sodium channels reducing cardiac excitability because of decrease in the potassium efflux there is excess of potassium in the intracellular fluid and these excess potassium ions interfere with the action of calcium ions this decreases force of contraction and hence mild to moderate hyperkalemia decreases heart rate and force of contraction with greater degree of hyperkalemia potassium gradient reverses and leads to further increase in the intracellular fluid concentration of potassium ions ultimately causing persistent depolarization and interference with the action of calcium ions these effects prevent muscle contraction leading to stoppage of heart since diastole now coming to the effects of excess of calcium ions moderate increase in calcium that is moderate hypercalcemia causes increase in the force of contraction but as you can observe every contraction is followed by complete relaxation this effect is due to more availability of calcium ions to bind with troponin c leading to increased contractility when excess of calcium is added causing severe hypercalcemia initially the relaxations become incomplete and eventually heart stops in systole this sustained state of contraction in systole due to excess of calcium is termed as calcium rigor excess intracellular calcium ions remain bound to troponin c as a result actomyosin interaction continues and prevents muscle from relaxation heart stops in systole understanding the role of these ions in cardiac function is crucial in clinical settings as their imbalances can lead to serious cardiac disorders so let's discuss some important clinical applications of this knowledge hyperkalemia that is increase in the extracellular potassium concentration can occur in renal failure excess of potassium intake tissue damage especially crushing type of injury or burns and certain medications like potassium sparing diuretics hyperkalemia decreases heart rate and weakens the contractions ecg shows tall peaked t waves and widen qrs complexes 
In severe cases, it can progress to ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest in diastole. In contrast, hypokalemia that is decreased extracellular potassium concentration increases cardiac excitability leading to arrhythmias. It also causes prolonged repolarization increasing the risk of ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. ECG changes shows flattened or inverted T waves, prominent U waves and ST segment depression. Hypokalemia can occur due to diuretics especially the loop or the thiazide diuretics then vomiting and diarrhea causing loss of excess of potassium ions and hyperaldosteronism. Next clinical condition that can be possible is hypercalcemia, excess of calcium in extracellular fluid. It increases contractility but reduces relaxation and in severe cases leads to calcium rigor. ECG changes shows shortened QT interval and arrhythmias. Hypercalcemia can occur in case of hyperparathyroidism, excess calcium intake or vitamin D toxicity and malignancies especially like bone tumors or multiple myeloma. The opposite condition hypocalcemia decreased calcium levels leads to decreased cardiac contractility leading to weak heartbeats. ECG shows prolonged QT interval increasing the risk of fetal arrhythmias. Hypocalcemia can be result of vitamin D deficiency, hypoparathyroidism, chronic renal disease or pancreatitis. Now coming to hypernatremia, excess of sodium in blood. In this experiment, we have not recorded the effect of excess of sodium ions, but increase in extracellular sodium ions that is hypernatremia increases sodium gradient across the cell membrane. This leads to increased sodium calcium exchange resulting in temporary rise in intracellular calcium which can enhance myocardial contractility. But this is very short lasting effect. Hypernatremia reduces excitability of the cardiac muscle by inactivating voltage gated sodium channels. This slows down the conduction velocity leading to arrhythmias. The causes of hypernatremia include dehydration, excess sodium intake, diabetes insipidus or hyperaldosteronism. It alters the excitability affecting generation of action potentials, increase blood pressure due to water retention and can cause hypertension related cardiac complications. The last ionic imbalance is hyponatremia, low sodium in blood. Severe hyponatremia can cause hypotension and reduced cardiac output. It can trigger arrhythmias in extreme cases. And the causes of hyponatremia include excess water intake, heart failure, syndrome of inappropriate ADS secretion and diuretic use causing excessive sodium loss. So here we have discussed effects only on the heart. But these ionic imbalances also affect various other systems including neurons. And understanding these effects is essential for managing the conditions like arrhythmias, hypertension, heart failure and electrolyte imbalances. Maintaining optimal ion balances is key factor in both cardiac physiology and emergency medicine. So that's all for today's. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. If you enjoy my presentations, press the like button and share it with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.